Hello, beautiful humans. Um, yeah, it's a small group today, which I think will be really beautiful. So we might have a little bit more time for a check-in from each one of us to share what's the most alive for us. And then also what you think the best next steps for Regen Civics in our collective here could be. So we can just kind of sense into the space there. Um, or we can take this however we wanna to go today because today's kind of an open session. So also part of your check-in could be an idea for some way to hold the space today if you have one of those. Um, so with all that being said, we can just kick this off and start going around. Maybe I'll send it to Lucian to say hello. Thanks, Reiki. Um, thanks. Any news, by the way, from you in terms of check-in? You need to share on that. Papa news. Um, sure. So if you're passing it right back to me. I, I, just, yeah. I just want, you know, that one, I think all of us are wondering. Like, um, how are you doing? No new baby yet. Um, due date is Saturday, so it could be any day now. Uh, we're fully ready for them. Uh, we've been connecting with them on a different plane already, so it's already been like we've been interacting with them. So this birth is more just kind of a transition, not like something completely new being sprung on us, if that makes sense. So we're pretty comfortable from it from that perspective. Um, just to be wild and weird, you might find interesting, we're planning on doing it on our own. So we have a midwife who's on standby, um, but we're really only going to call her if we need her. Uh, we're trying this thing called like more like orgasmic birthing and it's not necessarily sexual it's the idea that the birth process could be pleasurable and it oh, is if you're in a really safe loving container just like sex you know what container would you want to be having sex in if you're not normally used to you know orgies then you probably don't want a whole lot of people there <laughs> so this is very graphic but my point is is like if you could make birth really like sensual and loving and sacred in that way, then um, potentially the birth process itself could be or an orgasmic and pleasurable experience. So we don't know. This is our first baby. So we're just trying this and we have no idea. So our plan is really just to start music on Saturday, which is the due date on the full moon and just start playing some music, calling them in and seeing what happens. So <laughs> it'll be an interesting experiment and I'll report back on my findings later. Um, yeah, super excited for Regen Civics yeah. and everything that's, you know, emerging here, uh, going about actually selecting the 12 projects and hearing about them. Every time I have a conversation with one of the people running the 12, it's just like, this is incredible and awesome. And I want to live there. And the kid that's being born here in a couple of days wants to live there. So can we get this going already? So <laughs> that's how I'm checking in. Um, and now I'm sending it back to you. Okay, perfect. Well, I'm glad I'm glad I asked for the thing we're all we're we're all wondering. So um, yeah, it will be, just just all our goodness and energy toward towards you both. Um, this this weekend, we'll be thinking of you. Um, I'm doing great. Um, big here in Ibiza. Um, got a big a big undertaking this summer. Um, we're we're doing four full scale up games, uh, each one 48 people. Um, so we're over the summer, we're, 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 we're basically inviting 192 visionary change makers to create essentially a collective mythology of the future. Uh, and so we're very much open if uh, referrals, I'd like to be there on a team like um, it would be awesome for the Regen Civics team to curate the land stewardship team, which is going to be meeting in 10th to 17th of September in Ibiza. And that will be um, six people from around the world, six people from Ibiza. Um, but we've got uh, um, a sustainable food team in the Air League happening in June as well that could be relevant. Uh, and then the, I'm, I'm very excited. I'm being asked to do up games at gatherings now, like all over the place, which is really exciting. So um, with regards to Regen Civics, I think just having that question up front which i loved how you incorporated it reiki of you know what's your vision for 2030 and being able to use that as part of like the narrative development of like a unifying narrative of this ecosystem and this space giving these projects the ability to showcase like this is what the this is what our world locally looks like with us achieving our vision and our success and this is what the world looks like collectively with all of us achieving our success. And I think that narrative is going to be really helpful to hook in um, investors and see that this is like, this is an ecosystem of projects. Um, and um, otherwise, uh, I'm, you know, um, focused on 
uh, you know, focused on identifying uh, essentially what I describe as like athletes of system change um, for, for, the, for the games. So uh, if anyone's interested, I'll put my details in here and I'm going to pass it to Lauren. Okay, I just noticed that I wasn't muted, so it's a good thing it's quiet in here. Um, hi, everybody. I have not been super active, just kind of in the periphery. Um, my role in all this is supporting uh, kind of the overall. I'm working with um, Walter and Stephen and John and a couple other folks, Sydney, um, peripherally through helping to spread the word to the membership of Kinship Earth, um, which Walter's wife, Susan, um, developed those kins networks years ago. So I'm here to kind of listen. And then I'm also going to be assisting the team on helping to produce some communication. So um, really excited to be here. And um, I will pass it to, since I named his name so many times, Walter. Hi, everybody. Um, I just jumped on, but I assume we're just saying how, how we are. I'm, I'm great. I'm here in uh, Bocabamba, uh, Ecuador and Finca Sagrada, and I'm I'm starting to learn what this uh, this work is about. Here, this particular group with you know working with uh, communities and stuff. It's very it's quite exciting to meet all of you. And I don't know who's been on, so. Okay, why well, don't John? Okay, great. <clears throat> Thanks, Walter. Um, yeah, uh, before I get started, Reiki, uh, where in Utah are you actually? My parents both were born near Salt Lake. I've spent a lot of time in Utah. Where are you? Ogden. Ogden. Okay. We're trying in the Perfect. chat, so we're not back and forth. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Yeah, I know it well. Um, so uh, let's see, um, I'm in, in this particular call, my role is to support uh, Finca Sagrada um, into emerging into uh, the full uh, realization of the vision of what's possible there. It's already amazing and sacred and beautiful and regenerative. And there's an opportunity to reforest a mountainside and include um, more acreage in the um, you know in the the sacred farm that's already there it's um, so uh, so anyway I'm I'm here to support that coming into existence and in whatever way I can support the rest of the the projects in happening as well and I also don't know who's gone before so I'll let somebody name themselves or you name somebody, Reiki. Sure, why don't we go to Roberto. Hi, I'm Laura, it's Roberto and Laura. This is the first time we're here, so I will give a brief introduction of who we are. Um, we are here in Limino Village in uh, the center of I Italy. Um, it's um, an eco tech hub, as we call it. And over the last years, we have been uh, hosting temporary communities and we have been exploring social and technological tools to help communities thrive. And we're also setting up a, an, a network here, a local uh, bi regional regenerative network. Uh, so we've been also exploring um, work with the locals. And yeah, we are so excited to find this project because it's so aligned with what we do and we are very happy to meet other people that have the same vision and we're really excited to be here. And, uh, hi, I'm uh, Roberto, uh, co-founder of Liminal Village. I'm the tech guy. So when uh, uh, when we're talking about an eco-tech village, I'm, I'm taking care of the tech side of uh, everything. We have uh, developed our own water open source water frustration system. Uh, we're experimenting with precision farming and with uh, uh, also low technology like uh, Nodi Gardens. And uh, with uh, maybe one very interesting aspect of that I did not expect is that when I started this, uh, my background is in, a in AI, I really had this idea that technology could actually save us. 
But as we actually started an Ecotech Hub and we started to create this kind of temporary communities that would come here and co-create something together, um, they quickly realized that actually it's, uh, it's much more of a personal journey and a societal technology that needs to be developed and, uh, and experienced with. So we are gaining every month or every moon, because we're going with the cycle of the moon, uh, we actually, with whoever is here, uh, we learning on how to actually be together and uh, we're carrying that experience every time across each of the moons. Um, yes, I will uh, pass it to the, to the universe. Uh, hello. hello, thank you for that. Uh, I'm Will and this is Amori. I've invited him to, to the call today. I'll let, I'll let you start because people don't know you. Okay. So thank you, Will, for inviting me to, the, to that call. So uh, my name is Amori. Uh, I'm currently uh, developing some projects on the island of Ometepe in Nicaragua. So it's like an island uh, where I had the opportunity to buy a um, different piece of land. Uh, and with the intention of create like a network, a cluster of different project community that work in symbiosis. And of course, Central America, it's, uh, it's quite small. And I had the opportunity to meet uh, Will and we have like similar ID, similar uh, uh, ambition. So tomorrow we're gonna go visit the, mm. the project. And like, I like the word ecotech community because I really believe that we can leverage the technology in order to regenerate and to facilitate the, the, the value exchange, the information, like technology can facilitate the process of generate regeneration. So I'm eager to, to discover more and to, to make innovation. Cool. Okay. Sorry about the wind if it's really windy um, and you can hear that. No? Okay, cool. Um, so I'm representing Starseed Village, one of the um, eco villages that's applying for the cohort. And I'm also representing the Alliance as a whole. I feel like um, this journey has been yeah, really amazing so far. And I'm just really excited every week I show up meeting new people that are aligned to this same regenerative movement. Um, so yeah, wanting to give as much support to the projects that come into this incubator as, as well as receive for Starseed Village um uh yeah it's, it's a project in guatemala for those of you that, that don't know um was a coffee farm and and uh yeah it's a big vision with 155 hectares to transform into a, a bamboo village a treehouse village agroforestry educational center many many things um and yeah super connected with the high for dho and happy to see that materialize in the real world so we can start in, in, uh, engaging and interacting with these systems and embodying them I shall pass it to Stephen. Good day. Uh, I like being called on by the universe. Uh, thanks. Um, my name's Stephen. Uh, I've been in everything regenerative for about 10 years. I'm currently in Chicagoland, Illinois. Um, I uh, work in two major projects. Uh, one's Wooji Games. Uh, it's a regenerative gaming uh, rewards engine that can make any transaction plant a tree and uh, mint tokens. And the trees will grow in value because they produce all the valuable things like oxygen and biodiversity and, and such. And we've gamified it with our own game, uh, Earth Defenders, right? So you'll get taught regenerative agriculture skills, uh, how to capture rainwater, um, produce your own energy, all the things we talk about. Um, and we even want to put all these eco villages in the game world so people can see your guys' um, real world uh, villages be built out and participate and learn and even go visit. Um, so we'll have an onboarding process with the eco villages that want to be in the Earth Defenders uh, metaverse um, pretty soon. Uh, our demo, a demo is going to be coming out, uh, a single player demo. Um, uh, I'm never going to give a timeline again on, on technology because I've always been wrong. But um, uh, within the next month or so, we should have a single player demo out. Um, for Earth Defenders, where you get taught permaculture skills. Um, and uh, yeah, that's uh, about half my work. We just uh, um, got a grant from NIR uh, to do our first NFT launch. And we're currently 
um, building our rewards engine to be compatible with uh, NEARS protocol uh, in, in Rust. Uh, so that will be like our first test subject will be uh, if we can get it to work with near to plant a tree with every transaction, which is the top 20 blockchain, uh, we'll be well on our way. We have a tree tracking dashboard as well in Wallet, so you can track your trees and who planted them. Um, and uh, I'm rambling, and I also do everything hemp. I'm the founder of the World Hemp Alliance, um, international network of hemp experts and pioneers that I've kind of hand selected that are all humanitarians first with the plant. Um, and we're doing a hemp dome project um, at Building Man in Utah, uh, May 2nd through the 8th. Uh, it's a festival um, and building experience. We're doing a complete hemp dome is the goal. Uh, it's kind of my brainchild of using the hemp stalks to make a reciprocal 3V hemp dome and then kind of make bird's nests with the other hemp lattice and, and fill it in with hempcrete and uh, have a completely uh, all natural hemp uh, dome. If you look up Building Man or jankstars.com, I'll put it in the chat. Um, you can get tickets there. It's only 300 bucks for uh, a week long experience, uh, three day building experience, and three day uh, festival. Um, it's been going on for about 13 years, uh, right outside of Moab. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll put those, that, uh, that's everything that I got for now. Thank you guys. Um, and I'll pass it to, uh, let's see, um, Joel. Mm, thanks, brother. Amazing. Um, I'm Joel. I'm a little bit late this morning, jumping off another call. Um, a little bit of work. So what I've been up to in the last week, at least, is I'm part of a consortium of organizations in the US and Canada and abroad, putting different technologies in chains together, as well as gaming concepts um, to create a larger program, which we currently called Random Acts of Kindness stewarded by a nonprofit called Global Dignity. Um, so that has been incorporated quite nicely in the last couple of years uh, into what's happening in kind of decentralized organizations, human-based interactions that are happening over technology, um, how things like agency, uh, agreement fields, uh, maybe value, digital value, you know, as it's accrued for certain types of actions, whether that's time banking or planting trees. Um, so I'm feeling pretty fresh this week of um, a bunch of other things that I've been involved in that seem very relative, uh, especially when it comes to regenerative scorecarding, uh, census making across what is regenerative actions in the real world and how does that create value um, and how does that end up in people's pockets, so to say, as they go and transact in their, their daily lives. Um, I was also able to be a little bit more learned in uh, going through the documentation from this group and HIFA over the last week or two as well, um, and feeling really comfortable um, understanding um, where it's going and the vision, feeling really excited about that. And yeah, also weaving together some of these technologies to a lot of the groups that I work with, uh, as, as well as my own nonprofit that I'm a part of, not my nonprofit, but a profit I'm, nonprofit I'm a part of. Uh, focused on regeneration, uh, starting with indigenous elder territories and projects around the world. Um, so yeah, su feeling super jazzed today, super grateful to be here. Um, I will pass it on to, I don't know who hasn't gone yet today, actually, because I popped in late. So Why don't we send it to Kelly? Else. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Wow. Everybody's doing such amazing things. Um, so we're part of New Earth Development, help with uh, development services for eco-village type of communities in development planning, financial modeling, um, project management, all the things, and um, creating amazing teams around that. And then we have a project called Abundancia. We're working on developing land partnerships with people who share the vision over here in Costa Rica. And uh, it's based on the idea to liberate uh, residents of all survival needs, enabling them to focus on creation and innovation and just living an amazing, joyful life. Yeah. And uh, I'm Joe. And uh, my focus is really on fundraising and marketing and business development strategy. 
on the New Earth development team. Um, so really looking at how to use NFTs, uh, DeFi, and reinventing what mortgages look like in the New Earth to create less slavery and more, slavery and more access. Um, working with a handful of um, artificial intelligence powered trading platforms to create outsized and you know, above market rates of return to funnel into the regenerative movement, um, just because there's a lot of investors that are interested in this kind of thing. Um, come from a background running a digital marketing agency for years, launching viral videos and stuff like that. And um, yeah, I could say more, but really just here to empower and broadcast. I got really deep TV business connections to, to uh, broadcast TV shows as well, which is a huge part of broadcasting this whole regenerative movement. So um, that's in a nutshell what I'm up to. Um, maybe if anybody could raise a hand if they didn't go. I think uh, Sam, Sam, right? You, yeah. didn't, you didn't join it? Yeah, let's, let's hear from Sam in Portugal. Hey all, nice to be here for the first time. Yeah, hope I can make it. Um, yeah, I'm in Portugal building a regenerative village called the Traditional Dream Factory, part of the OSI network. Um, also developing technology to support villages through Closer. Uh, basically just building some very simple interfaces that allow us to, to handle that physical community and just building in different features as we go. Uh, and we're in the process of tokenizing the village, creating, uh, well, designing the token for that, and building some proof of presence uh, methodologies that we'd like to implement for, um, yeah, for how we're going to be doing governance in our village. And I'll pass it to Andrew. Awesome. Thank you. Um, I'm Andrew. I'm currently in uh, Tulum, Mexico, and uh, here kind of representing an alliance now. Um, it was kind of a, a solo project, uh, but after a big event here at Tribalize, uh, the vision and project kind of expanded, um, encompassing a alliance of communities um, here in the Riviera Maya uh, with the same intention to uh, bring you know communities together in order to uh, create a, a DAO and by as much as the Riviera Maya as um, possible uh, in order to conserve it. So yeah, happy to be here. And yeah, I can't. I don't know who else has not gone. So if Let's anyone wants to raise their hand, and uh, yes, hello. Let's see if I can get my video to work. My connection's been a little spotty today. Hello, everyone. Happy to see some familiar faces. Hello, hello. And uh, I'm Ana Naturalista, founder of the Sacred Intelligence Agency. And we have been supporting entrepreneurs and community developers for almost 30 years now. And in my uh, former economics background in career having had a broker dealer and lots of other developmental um, systems um, Regena Thrive is our infrastructure development system for all the regenerative communities in the world focused on a lot of these sacred economics and land stewardship models uh, working with number one time bank in the world as well as the uh, global eco village network system for a couple of decades and several other uh, very prominent communities around the world so that we have the resources support and wisdom of helping everyone to do it right the first time now that there are so many others growing and building community and uh, really following the path of the prophecies of the time that we're all being called into right now and creating these beautiful systems and living in ways that we know are in highest resonance with nature. So we have multiple teachers and education systems from self-mastery to our own consulting agency as well for every range of development and support. Happy to be here. Thank you for the invitation. Have we missed anyone or did anyone recently join? If so, just feel free to unmute yourself. Tucker is waving his hand there. Oh, Tucker. Hello. My name is Tucker. I represent the Tioga community up here in New Hampshire. And uh, we are uh, working with existing generational farmland and uh, the families that currently run them to transition them into regenerative communities. And so our vision is to create like a, a network of these smaller regenerative 
communities that leverage the existing knowledge of the family there uh, to kind of turn them into like these regenerative agriculture and education centers that we can then put people through to learn trades and then eventually bring them back to one of our, our bigger uh, villages that we're raising money for right now, which would be 700 acres um, that they can then implement those trades that they've learned, that learned there. And we're using land trusts to do this and we're identifying ways to uh, use blockchain technology to represent equitable interest in the land trusts to have a, a really uh, easy on and off ramp for people to uh, access their equity and, and join these communities and contribute. I'm also working with Regent NFTs um, to do their content marketing, and we're hoping to use that to help fundraise for some of the projects in the Alliance. Thank you. Excellent. Hey guys, yep. I'll share really briefly. I'm Sid, I'm recovering from a cold, um, but I'm supporting with the Alliance's project evaluation and administration. And I'm also part of Permatours, which received funding from Seeds to do a bunch of permaculture action and sustainable construction events last year. We're keeping the tour going this year. It's going strong and also supporting with fundraising with NFTs in collaboration with some people here and excited to support the Alliance in that area. Thank you all so, so much for all you're doing. And Nadim, you're up. Thank you, Sid. And thank you all for showing up today. This is so beautiful. Just listening to you, just my heart beats faster. It's so beautiful. Thank you all. And I'm representing here Dear Wise Earth, a consultant agency for regenerative principles. And we have access to high-tech um, solutions kind of um, remote viewing sensory um, where we have access to several satellites connected with AI are able to make predictions about um, the environment where your lab is right now or your uh, community. And you can uh, even make a um, sensory of um, the places um, how regenerative are you and you can scan your whole area and other amazing technologies coming together in the service for the commons here. And then um, one part of the Dear Wise Earth um, offerings are the living labs, and we have um, them all around the world. One of them is the Tabio de Generativo. This we're going to be opening up next week on Saturday, talking about new birth. So there is a new um, project going to be born on Saturday, and we will be opening the door for uh, nine volunteers to start with the um, permaculture gardening and uh, yeah. It's amazing times, and I'm so honored to be with you and to be in the journey with you together. Thank you so much, all. And back to Reiki. We had, oh, Brandon, please go. Hey, everyone. Um, Colin here from Bali. It's, uh, 30 in the morning so again just loving uh to see everyone and all the sunshine on your guys in uh we're representing here with dessa uh dessa has been connecting and helping with some of the evaluation processes on onboarding more projects and also taking more in the application so i uh, look forward to contributing more and learning more uh, and seeing new faces here in this collective so thank you We had mentioned this before in previous calls, but this idea of medicine and how watching these calls is like medicine. It's, it's so fantastic, every one of these check-ins. Um, and I actually think that's something that we can emerge here as all of our projects, we keep learning, we keep these calls. It's kind of like a, a citizen assembly. So how we did democracy and coordinated as humans and societies and settlements back in the day is through citizen assembly. Where we came together, we shared insight and, you know, we tackled similar and shared problems together. So we can leave this space for doing that and maybe merge. And then as we pick the 12 projects, then we could have one council where representatives from each one of those 12 projects are then showing up to share what's happening and make sure we're learning together and not repeating shared mistakes and all that fun stuff. Um, so that's one idea. And then with that idea is we're already doing these calls where we're each introducing ourselves. So these calls can also serve as a record. So when new people show up and they're like, well, I wanna know who's all in participating in this. It's like, oh, great, we'll just go watch all these episodes. And then it can go and watch the first and be introduced to who we all are and what everyone's bringing to the table so that we can you know, stack functions here and we can 
scale our coordination a little bit more effectively. So instead of having to have the same dialogue over and over, we can have people actually watch the video and get caught up to the dialogue. Um, so then people can watch it and then get in contact with you if they want to create with you. So we need one place where we have all of our contact information. So join the Regen Civics Discord, and then you'll be there so people can actually reach out to you and connect with you about their projects and you can build alliances and work together. Uh, but then also in our getting started, we can have a list of everyone and their emails as they join or whatever your preferred contact method is. Um, so again, we can start coordinating more effectively together. One more thing, an idea, and then I just want to hear ideas from everyone about how we can scale this is I shared with it in the chat, but it's an orientation series, at least the first attempt at doing so. So it's a four part kind of documentary, helping people kind of orient themselves to what's happening here. We can build new economic and governance systems. There's a renaissance underway. This is what it looks like, et cetera. And I would love one to get your all opinion on that. And if it's not the right format to do it, or we can improve it, then I would love for us to keep improving it. And then having an orientation series that people can watch and really get a hold of what's happening in the renaissance. Um, and then us all to make a shared fifth episode. So the first four would be like the orientation getting started and then it branches off into a whole bunch of different journeys. So it's kind of a choose your own adventure game at that point when people are showing up. But each one of the different branches could be led by each one of our different projects. So whatever you're doing, how people can collaborate with you, um, what networks and tools you're offering and how they un could understand them and use those tools or be part of your project or whatever it is that people need to know in order to collaborate with your project and what you're doing. Your fifth, your episode, the starting one would be the fifth one, but a new path um, that you can lead and then have as many episodes as you want. So that way, as new people keep showing up, we can then send them to, you know, a few episodes that they can watch and it walks them through how they can participate in this renaissance. Um, and we've been finding this is critical because within seeds, there's a, a, so much information that people show up, they get completely overloaded, they can't handle it. Like, well, I really want to be part of this, but I have no idea where to fit in. So this has been a, you know, a multi-year journey now to try to figure out how we can solve that problem. And this is the latest instantiation of it. Um, and then also how we solve a whole bunch of other problems with scaling coordination is the whole point of the video series. So it actually walks through those processes and tools and what we have available, what we learned, and it's a it's meant to be very valuable. So I'd love some feedback if it's not. Um, so yeah, that's the next step for all of us to take. Final thing is there was a call this week about the project selection process and what those 12 projects are required to have in order to even apply. And then some more thoughts and ideas around how we can actually select them when we're ready. Um, I know someone else was present. I don't want to talk too much. So I'd rather someone else actually share that if you're on that call. So. I see a bunch of you here, just put your hand up and I'll pick on one of you. Um, but the outcome of that was what Lucian was bringing up at the beginning of this call is for each one of those projects to make their five to seven minute video, forget how long it was actually, I think it was five minutes, um, from the 2030 perspective. So I think this would also make them more entertaining to watch and more valuable to watch. So rather than, you know, this is our business model and you know, this is how many people there are, and this is why our egos are big. No offense to people who do that or whatever. It's this is what 2030 looks like. This is a day in the life if we succeed. And then, of course, you know, the deeper dive is how you actually go about doing that. But that five minute video could be projecting into the future. And then when we make a canvas of, you know, 100 of these videos, we're telling a shared story of what that future actually looks like, which is a diverse future of a whole lot of different projects and beautiful ideas coming together and that we can create more of them, et cetera. So that is kind of how we tell the shared global narrative is all of those five minute videos coming together. Um, one idea. So anyway, that's a whole bunch of different ideas. That's a lot on the table. And this is what we can do is just keep going around. And if you'd like to speak, put your hand up. So for the remainder of this, I'll just play facilitator, just calling on people who've had their hands up or participating myself. Um, I'll pause here because I think Lucian wants to speak and we'll go from there. Yeah, well, Reiki, I'm, that's music to my ears, as you can imagine. Uh, I'm delighted. Was that our conversation last week or was there a call in between? So I was just trying to confirm. There's a call in between. It was the Great. actual working group I met. Great. Yeah. I love it. I love it when things happen and you're not there and they're exactly as you would love them to happen. It's great. <laughs> but um, yeah, just if, if anyone has thoughts on this, I'm, I'm happy. I, I, I think I'm a bit of a veteran by now. Um, I think I've guided at least a thousand people uh, into 2030 to share their narratives. And I find it to be a extremely compelling place to meet each other as 
as peers, as collaborators, and um, you know, really see that we're on the same team. And one big hypothesis we've got at United Planet is it's actually a really powerful way to present to investors as well. And if we can flip the funding from um, the kind of the here and now towards the future into this is what we're here to do, invest in this narrative, and then here's our reverse engineering of how we got there from the future backwards. I think it's a very powerful way of um, aligning funding milestones and um, um, build, building a collaborative ecosystem. And I think it lends itself really well to the like do DAO space. So um, just any thoughts that I would love to put um, the United Planet world that we're creating over the summer where we're going to be doing um, a series of films and VR immersive experiences that come out of these 16 teams we're bringing together into 2030. So I'd love to showcase projects there. So um, maybe if, if, if people are if interested in showcasing their projects, as part of a, a team, that could be something in the application process that they could register their interest in being part of that. Our, our, our intention is that these- Could we have it that the 12 projects who are picked are automatically part of that and already yeah. have- Yeah. We could, we could totally do that, exactly, as a, as a model. And that could be a, uh, we could actually, that's a really smart way of doing it because we, it could be almost like a prize for being picked as well that you get to then go into this immersion together and it could be a really good way of us building deep trust and, and and shared identity of with all the chosen projects love it um so there's a lot of just practical questions on the video submission process so does anyone who was present during that working group want to share so maybe kelly joe or brandon if not, I can share. Sure, okay. I can share a little bit. <clears throat> Perfect. Um, yeah, so we went through all the different requirements um, for projects to apply. Um, basically just refining that down to make sure that these are the requirements and um, taking out the things that maybe will be more for the scoring. And then the scoring process, basically the, the other criteria is going to be put through a kind of a scoring type of process where we're going to actually take the criteria and line item it to be actual, like more in question format. Um, so then we can kind of give a rating from one to five on how well they meet that specific criteria. So that could help with scoring projects. And um, yeah, there was some other things we went over as far as how we are going to be doing the uh, general scoring. Ricky, you kind of showed that platform of the uh, different, the, the platform that we're going to go all go on and actually give it like a, a score. But maybe that score wouldn't exactly relate to the scoring process that we're talking about, correct? If you want to just share a little bit more on that, that would be great. Yeah, I could actually literally show it. So that might be helpful. So let me bring it up here. <clears throat> so it's called Big Rocks and there's a template that we can just borrow, you know, no need to reinvent the wheel right here and you can play along. So this is what we're thinking. We have all of those, you know, I think 33, I think it's more now. It's probably gonna be about 40 projects do a five minute video from 2030. And that would be a beautiful thing to have anyway is 45 minute clips of what the future could look like, like awesome. That's a beautiful thing to create. Um, but anyway, we have those 40. And then once we select them, we're going to put each one of the projects here as a new row, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we have every project and then they could even mention, you know, why we should even consider that project, you know, a quick tagline of why it's the best and greatest or whatever. Okay, so then we actually go through and then every person who shows up at the call, so that's kind of the first criteria. In the future, Regen Civics will have a do and we'll have all of this on chain and it'll be great. Um, do DAO, whatever we call it, whatever we use. Um, for who, people who don't know what that is, don't worry about it. But for the call, we can actually all show up, put everyone's name here, and then give everyone 100 points. So we all have the same voice, right? And then we click next. And then we actually get to go through and be able to add points to each one of the different projects. So we're making our own assessment. So yeah, we're putting up some ideas about what regeneration is, 
and we'll eventually work towards having like an objective criteria for scoring. I think that's something that's going to take a lot of time. Right now, it's more subjective. The people who are showing up at that call, who've been part of this Regen Civics journey so far, you get to show up and use your own discernment and judgment of how you want to distribute your 100 points across the you know, 33 projects there are. And we'll literally do that on the call. We'll record the process. We'll go through it. And by the end of it, we'll have the top 12 projects. They're going to have the most points. And those will be the 12 that are selected unless we get to that point and we feel the whole thing broke and we want to try it a different way, <laughs> you know, so we can always use consensus to change our governance process if we feel we're not getting the outcomes that we're looking for, um, which is how we evolve our governance process. So anyway, pausing there, thoughts, questions, anything. Do we like that? Are we all consensus and cool? Sounds good. Is that tool, is Big Rocks like an example case study or is that the name of the tool? That's the name um, of the tool. Right. <clears throat> it's called Big Rocks, like a, uh, like a. Uh, it's like a Big Rocks exercise. And the concept is, you know, you put your Big Rocks down first before you put your little rocks if you're building a wall. Right. So you want to have your highest priorities. How do you find your highest priorities? Here's one way of doing it. So it's meant for teams and actually any working group and DAO, you can use this, it's really effective. If you guys are trying to figure out strategy in your community and you don't know the main things to focus on, or you're trying to distribute a finite budget amongst a bunch of different projects and ideas or things to be built in the village or whatever, you could actually use this tool to be able to distribute voice. And this is what Seeds is literally doing. Seeds gives you, you know, 99 or how many voice tokens you earn. So depending on how much you contribute to the project and projects could copy and use this tool. It's a great idea, but how much you contribute to the project, you're going to earn these voice tokens. And then you spend your voice tokens, much like this exercise, on a bunch of different projects, you know, or potential features or strategies or whatever is being voted on or trying to be discerned as a collective. And then the highest ranked ones pass, so whatever the passing threshold is. So it's just a way of, you know, collectively sensing and, you know, ever growing groups of people, you know, where we want to go, what's important to us, how should we spend our collective funding, etc. Um, if we'd like this tool and we want to extend it, this is also how the Regen Civics Council can establish a budget. So when we go to institutional investors, we raise money, they fund us directly, and then we have money, we have 100 alliance partners or whoever we have, you know, how do we distribute that money out to all those partners? One way could be our collective intelligence process. If we all had a way of discerning what the budget could be, and then we aggregated that information, Maybe that could give us a really accurate story of, you know, how we could spend those funds in the most effective way. You know, we could also bake in things where we say, you know, me as an organization, I just need 100k. Are you willing to meet that? And we can, you know, we don't have to be enslaved to any type of tool either. Uh, but anyway, just wanted to put all that out there because it's our governance process is what's alive right now and what we're actually trying to figure out a bunch of bunch of projects is how do we make decisions together as a global movement. Um, John, got your hand up. Yeah, right, Reiki. I, um, I have a question about the, the video. And, um, it, you know, it seems to me, you know, for me to really be ranking um, any of the projects that I don't know very much about, I not only need to know their vision of, you know, what they've been able to accomplish by 2030, and, uh, but I need to know something about where they are along the road now. I mean, I need to know something about their capabilities uh, for, you know, that they're already bringing to it. So um, I, I should have said this that before. Um, we, we have a set of requirements, and this is what the working group was actually about establishing, that in order to be even looked at as part of those, you know, 30 projects or whatever, you meet these requirements. So we're already pre-qualifying these projects before we ask any of your time to watch their video anyway. Um, so they're already meeting a minimum threshold that we consider, you know, valid in order to be successful, which is, you know, how far along are you on the project? And you actually can go to our knowledge base and see what all the requirements are. Um, maybe it's worth bringing up. Yeah, um, can Kelly or, yeah, Kelly, do you guys mind bringing it up? The actual... Sure, you want me to share the screen? Yeah. Um, sure. So we can go over those requirements real quick. So we're actually looking at projects saying, do you meet this? Because if not, then, you know, maybe you actually join an incubator or you just follow along and, you know, you get prepared and try again next year, you know, or next season. So, yeah, here's the requirements for projects 
topics to apply that we have agreed upon. Um, existing land or assets under contract. Do you want me to just go through them one by one to just read them out loud? Um, I don't know if we need to, unless we all want to. So maybe we'll take a, you know, a group vote real quick. Um, how many people want to go over these things one by one? If yes, just put a thumbs up or an emoji. If you would rather not and us discuss something else today, just don't put any reaction at all. No, it, it's in the okay. reaction. This is where you can find it. It's like least. generally not. So why don't we just share this in the chat and you can just give a quick high level overview instead of one by one. Perfect. Yeah, I think Sydney had already shared the link in the chat. So you guys should all have access to this document. So that's where you can find the requirements. And basically it being um, ready to fundraise, have their basic organization structure formed, have sustainable organization and regenerative business models integrated, um, actually be regenerative according to a certain framework. You can see here at this link, uh, regenlive.org slash what is regenerative and have it be replicable since that is really what we're doing here is creating a model for the way that many people are gonna be able to live around the world, um, having the replicability incorporated into your plan and then having a, a system for the DAO or do tokenomics, and then basically edifies others about regenerative development. So just like, is there training on regenerative development? Is there resources? Are you giving materials and information for other people to be able to do the same thing as well? Do you want me to share a little bit about the scoring or? Sure. Them, let's do that. Okay. So yeah, then here's the things that are going to be the criteria uh, when you think about scoring. Um, right now we haven't gone through these to have them more a scalable kind of question model, uh, but just making sure that they're incorporating some of these general ideas with uh, their status of land ownership, their financials being uh, well done, just having some sort of initial framework for their financials, having many of these different types of regenerative systems in place, and they have a give back model, and also looking for a diversification of projects in different uh, geographical areas, different countries, so that we can have um, many all over the map to serve as examples for different areas. And these are just some other things to consider. Um, so you can kind of look through this a bit more. Um, one of the things was the Living Building Challenge Certification Guidelines. It's, I've attached a uh, just a general overview of these Living Building Challenge Certification Guidelines. Um, so you can kind of understand, uh, you know, those a little bit deeper, but um, more at the high level. You don't have to go through the actual certification process or anything like that, unless that is part of your plan already. You know, that that would be a great thing to do. Um, and yeah, this is basically what we took list of what the other 12 projects will develop. Um, and this, yeah, this is what we'll do together once the 12 projects are selected. Did anyone wanna share anything else about that? Uh, I could just add something with us. So we're looking at that criteria and maybe someday we get objective with how we score projects. But again, in the meantime, we'd be voting. So what we're asking for is that you're, you're holding a role as a council member. As people you know, sitting here and voting and trying to collectively sense, we're doing it as an organ for the best, for the whole movement, right? So it's not like you've got your 100 points and then you distribute them to projects just because you like them or whatever your personal bias is. What we're trying to do is distribute out those tokens based on our best assessment of those criteria. So it is kind of a, a guideline for how we're distributing our tokens and what we're trying to sense here. Um, at least that's how I would hope that we all do it. But of course, you know, we get a kind of mix between everything when we do decentralized governance. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to add that. And that was an awesome overview. Thanks, Kelly. Thank you.
Um, does anyone else have anything else they would like to share or bring into this? And anything about the model too? Um, I do have a, a question around um, how is it, this invitation being shared, invitation to communities that we know? Is this an inner circle invitation? Is there like a public campaign going on? Is there a number of communities that we are looking to invite to the voting process? How is that looking so far? I think it's looking that we're not mature enough to handle complexity like that yet. <laughs> Uh, at least from my opinion. I would love for that to happen though, and for us to share this wider. I know there was also a desire to move quick and that we already had 35 projects and a lot of them were fantastic. So we felt like we already could easily get 12 projects. Um, so from my opinion as a roadmap is we just pick these 12 from the pool of projects that we're already connected with within a movement. Um, and they still have that deadline. So if anyone's watching this call or you know, anyone participating here, you know any other projects haven't heard about this yet, then please send them an invite and they can also still apply as long as they hit the, the deadline that we've set up. Um, but then I still think we kind of just move and then we plan for next year to have a little bit more noise and maybe actually do a campaign, invite more people and projects once we have our foundation set and we're ready for that type of growth. Um, but what I've also found is if you try to grow a organization like this too quickly, it tends to kind of fall apart and get overwhelming. Um, so I think it also a little bit makes a little bit of sense to kind of stay small and just see who kind of finds themselves here on their own. I haven't been sending out invites for weeks now, and this group has still kind of been dynamic and, you know, evolving at its own right. And from what I see, it's everyone who's especially meant to be here. So this is fantastic. So anyway, that's how I'm kind of approaching it, but I would love to hear anyone else's thoughts on that. Walter. Um, the question there is, is very long. I, could, I can imagine putting writing out pages, you know, um, and the, so there'll be a, a small group sort of evaluating all that um, and giving recommendations. I guess everybody could read it if they want, but it's, it's a pretty uh, lengthy questionnaire. And, and, and my other thing is, um, uh, some of the questions are pretty techy. You know, I, I would be um, a little deficient in, in that aspect, yet, you know, we've had this farm going for uh, 14 years. So, all right, what we've done is a lot. But when I guess, you know, if, if we uh, do the vision of 20, 30, then we could say, hey, we got the bunch of young techie guys here doing all that stuff. <laughs> you, know, you know, see my question? Yeah. Um, that is actually, that's a great question. And it came up in the working group when we were going over requirements because some of the requirements were really technical. We were talking about, did they have a regenerative business model yet? You know, a lot of projects might not even know about that yet. So we, can, we separate it into two steps. We'll have a requirement for projects that you have to meet in order to be part of the project or part of the Alliance. But then we'll go through a process before the crowd pooling where we actually help them with the technical side. So they don't need to know about a do or a token or how they're gonna do governance or what the rewards are gonna be like or any of that stuff. What they need to have is a regenerative project and land and something awesome they're doing for the world, which is what you've got. And then if you're part of that 12 and you're selected, then we help those communities with the techie side that we're bringing to the equation. Um, so that would be one of the extra you know, benefits of being part of this alliance and being selected is to walk through that process um, as a group. And then of course, subsequent years, projects could actually watch our process as because we open sourced it and they can go on that on their own. So that's part of what we're doing here as well. Um, does that answer your question, Walter? Yeah, that, that's good. Gives me a better idea, yeah. Anyone, anything else? I have one more idea then to throw at the group and then we can just do a round circle checkout and we can close for today. And that is one experiment we've been playing with in some decentralized groups is that when we come together and we're all trying to sense on our own what the next best step is, we all kind of have our own inspiration what we can do to bring value to this group. Um, and if we don't, we can ask a question to maybe find it. So it's kind of a, a governance through inspiration process. 
So here's one idea. As we do our checkout through this, you can say if you're inspired to bring something to this group and what that might be, and then just commit yourself to doing that and um, bringing that. And that's how we can keep evolving as a group. Um, so I'm inspired to help groups, anyone here who wants to make their you know, first episode, episode five, or whatever we're calling it. Um, so explaining their project or their organization or what they are specifically with the context that they already have the first four episodes of background. So we don't have to reiterate any of that stuff. You can just really dive into your project specifically and what you're up to. Um, if you would like to do that and work with me on that, I am reach out to me and I would love to talk to you. Um, and then I will pass it to maybe Lucian and we can just check out this way. Or if you have another idea for checkout, please add that too. <laughs> Yeah, I um, I, I I love the love the approach to start with the twenty thirty vision, as you can as you can imagine. Um, and I would just say, um, you know, creating a, um, a cohort that can really truly support each other on their fundraising goals is going to be key. So, like, how we, you know, can can we ask how committed you are to working with others in the accelerator? Uh, in the incubator to for their collective success, I think is going to be really important as well, and then how we develop that. Um, um, but uh, I think great work, and uh, and and I'm just going to check out with uh, all, all all good energy to 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 you guys, Reiki, Miss and CC. Uh, and I'm going to pass it to. Are we? Are we? Go, are we passing it? John. Okay. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, I just want to uh, check out with a little bit of uh, um, add on to to Walter's uh, question, um, which is uh, I see in the requirements that we need some kind of global plan for tokenization. But, you know, I'm hoping that the requirement is that we, we know we want it, we have an idea about how to do it, but we don't necessarily have the technology for doing it. Uh, you know, the technical expertise for doing it ourselves. So that's what I'm hoping, because that's where we are with Pinca Sagrada. Um, and I'm really, really, really excited with, um, you know, this uh, supporting, uh, regenerative projects around the world and the vision that we have for this regen civics i love it so much and i will go with sydney thanks mr love hi all i am in love with this group and i feel really gross and sick today but you all give me energy and I'm just, I, I can't even believe that, that we get the opportunity to do this together and um, yeah, just learning every week and inspired by all of you and pumped to be co-creating. Um, I'll pass it to Nadim, my fellow brother and collaborator. Mm, thank you so much, Jason. thank you. And thank you all. Um, now looking at the document and what we want to deliver here and creating the video and I was thinking, oh my God, how can I do all that? And my plate is so full. But thanks to Sydney and uh, with Permatures, we got many volunteers now. So some of them are media creators and video editors and all that. So um, we have our first task for them that after planting some permaculture garden stuff. But yeah. I think we will have an amazing video and uh, I'm looking forward to see all the other projects and just vibe into it and send my energy and my love to these amazing projects. So yes, let's let's do that. Thank you so much, all of you. And uh, yeah, I passed to Roberto. I'm looking forward for, I saw a video of Luminar Village, it's beautiful, but yeah, <laughs> let's, let's pass it to you. Thank you, Nadim, and thank you for inviting us. This is such a wonderful group of people, and uh, I really can't wait to get deeper into understanding uh, what you all are to. It's, uh, it's really amazing. Um, on uh, our side, yes, the Vision 2030, I always, I always like to actually 
come back from the future we want to create back to where we are right now and what do we need to do what is the next step so maybe a question is indeed like at which level do we need to speak because everything that we do is fractal right so uh, do we need to speak about our specific node or about what we're doing at the network or both at the network level so in 2030 is is that are we talking about the network or are we talking about our place or ourselves within this this place so personal local global the three scales and uh but i'm yeah i'm really excited to make that video and uh, i'm looking forward to all of yours as well Let's say something yeah thank you all for all the work and the coordination and amazing material it's just it's just really really good to go through it and explore all these amazing ideas thank you all we pass it to marcus hey everyone um yeah really excited to submit a video application and go through this whole process and get this thing going it's been uh, definitely yeah, I think a lot of us are really excited about materializing this. So looking forward to, to seeing all of your submissions. And as always, feel free to reach out. And I'm going to pass it on to the universe. Yeah. Um, I really feel honored to be in that call. I felt that the last three, four years, I was like doing my things alone. Uh, people around me didn't understand and I think like in that call I feel wow I have finally found my tribe I don't know you guys but I feel that we are sharing like similar vision and ambition and I like the integration of the technology that something is uh, important without uh, forgetting the, the end goal which is like creating the reality you want to create so yeah, I really feel honored and uh, and I would like to acknowledge that we are not uh, talking about a dream, but we are also, I feel it's, it's a plan. It's like we are doing things, it's we are taking action. And that's also that uh, feel my heart that it's a plan, it's not a dream. So we are doing it. I'm proud to be part of that uh, initiative. Thank you, Will. Cool, cool. Thank you for showing up. And thank you to everyone else that showed up too. Um, this call is always really inspiring. People here, some amazing hearts, amazing visions. I have no doubt in the success of this alliance, and I'm just really excited to see the DHO be released in many, many different ways, not just in this container, but others too, for the new economy to be uh, more grounded here on Earth so that we can live it and be it. Um, and yeah, just just really grateful to be here in service to that movement, to that vision, the regenerative renaissance. Um, sending you all so much love and yeah, see you next week. Uh, I will pass it to who's not gone yet. Hans, anyone? Uh, Samuel. Thanks, Matt. Uh, yeah, so excited to see all these villages happening and yeah, looking forward to connect in more ways. Um, yeah, I will be seeing if we can submit an application uh, for traditional hand factory. Um, yeah, just excited to see more movement weaving. Uh, I think Walter, did you raise your hand? Yes. Go for it. Um, we have all these wonderful uh, projects going on, like Bilkabamba, which is our, our neighboring village. Um, we're doing a creating a, a sovereign uh, watershed, and um, really great group of people there. They're not necessarily, you know, connected to to uh, blockchain technology and all that stuff. But it's both foreigners and and locals really trying to regenerate the area here. And of course, on our farm, Finca Sagrada, I'm going to put out a little appeal. Um, we we usually have four or six uh, volunteers who help us on the farm. It would be uh, great if you know of any uh, more techie guys uh, who would love to um, help, you know, create 
develop that whole side of of um, what I would call the you know going into the future with the blockchain technology and all that stuff. Um, so, you know, if you know anybody who would love to be on a beautiful place where you know uh, we support our volunteers, yeah. Anyway, that's where we're at. Thanks so much, everybody. Oh, uh, well, I could go to um, Lauren. Thank you. Awesome. Um, I'm excited to witness the, um, the coming together of consciousness and the shared resources that are developing from this project. I see the, um, the potential is massive. Uh, excited to be here to help be one of the uh, voices to help communicate fractally through our community. And um, uh, again, I'm supporting Walter and his wife, Susan and John and some of the folks in Finca Sagrada. And there is a, a, a call for some of the folks in this community who have that vision and who've been doing a lot of that development work. Walter and Susan have been doing it for many, many years, and yet there's a, there's a next generation ready to, you know, that there's a void for someone to come in and, and support. So feel free to reach out to one of us if you're feeling called. And I will pass it to uh, Neil. Have you gone yet? Thanks, Lauren. <clears throat> so what I'm, you know, what's really emerged for me, what I'm working on based on a lot of the inspiration activity here is a philanthropic donor assisted fund and a legal team to help people shift from private ownership to tokenized regenerative community ownership. So if you wanna join that team, there is a channel called community ownership in the uh, discord and uh, love to um, connect. And I pass it to Tucker, who's in that group. Thank you, Neil. Um, I am, uh, my name's Tucker. I'm really excited to, uh, as Neil was just talking about, dive into that ownership uh, group and, and tokenizing ownership with land trusts and, and all that. I'm also very excited to uh, dive in with my team making this five minute um, 2030 future video. I'm, I'm very excited about that. And uh, I'm also just really excited to see this web this network of people growing and uh, a little synchronicity if Andrew's still listening. I just found out that my younger brother's new um, mindset coach is one of Andrew's roommates, ironically, just a weird little connection there. So uh, yeah, love those synchronicities. I'm not sure who hasn't gone yet, but we'll pass it on maybe Andrew. Thank you, yeah, uh, Cody was just telling me about that yesterday. Um, yeah, cool synchronicity. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling, yeah, feeling excited and grateful to, to be part of this group and to, to keep tuning into to what's happening here, um, and to see the, the progress. Um, yeah, I don't know if, you know, I, I'm feeling that, you know, the, the projects that I'm representing, I don't know if we'll be at scale enough to be part of this, this cohort. Um, but yeah, I'm, you know, accepting what's, where things are the way they are. And, you know, I think that, you know, as we evolve and grow and this first cohort comes through, there's going to be, you know, many things that uh, we can apply to all the other projects that are, that are coming to follow. So, um, yeah, I, I just think it's really, really amazing how, you know, we're, we're all in the same energy and the same, um, you know, these, these concepts and these ideas and that they're all so similar and, you know, that we have this um, framework now that we're all weaving them together um, and creating alliances on top of alliances into a global alliance and to a you know a new global economic system of regenerative communities. Um, and I also feel that I can you know represent this alliance in itself um, as I kind of do this tour uh, next month in uh, Europe of connecting with some different um, impact investors and projects and just begin weaving more uh, systems and funding together. So. Uh, we'd love to connect with to different people in each individual project. If you guys could reach out to me on Discord, um, just have a contact point of how I can weave some um, funding into these different projects if they align with you know some of the the investors that I'll be networking with over the next few months. So I feel that is what's coming up for me of how I can provide value to some of you. And I would also 
I'd like to pass it to Joe and Kelly. Thanks, Andrew. Yeah, so I'm just really feeling super, super grateful to be a part of this group. Um, such incredible like minds here that share the vision for humanity to truly flourish in harmony with each other in nature. And I feel like we're really like the pioneers and, you know, we're literally creating a new world with what we're doing and the fact that we all share that we want to replicate this model and teach others how to do this, you know, really setting the standards for the new way of building for the world. We're going to be able to solve so much of the world's major issues um, by just doing what we're doing. It's just really exciting um, and really uh, grateful to be a part of it and excited to help support in any way all these other projects as well with um, our experience um, in development and whatever else we can. Well said. Yeah, I just want to say thank you to all of you guys for answering the call. I mean, like we get, you know, we talk on Zoom and these are all exciting conversations, but the reality is all of us had to lead a life that is extraordinarily different full of a lot of like unknowns that we persisted through, through a lot of challenges we never saw coming. And all of us have kept going. So I just tip my hat to every single one of you courageous hearts and amazing souls for continuing to do the work and continuing to be the musical instrument to let the divine regenerative orchestra come through however it comes through you. So I love you guys so much. I'm honored to be on these calls. I'll keep supporting as much as I possibly can. And uh, yeah, I'll pass it along. To Joel, have you gone? Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Kelly. Yeah. Oh, wow. Talk about gratitude and just feeling so blown away by the intention and energy in this group and being able to participate in these calls more so in check in and check out. And all of us bringing our our backgrounds into this moment and leaving it behind it feels so good um, to work in this, this weaving. And so for me, I feel so personally fulfilled uh, energetically. I feel like the, the groups and collectives that I'm, I'm working with are in full support of my presence here um, representing, you know, our, our collective interests and our projects. I think today what came up for me is really feeling into whether or not we're at a place to begin being in the next year's cohort or not although I feel most of our team feels that way that I was feeling today to check in with everybody because one of the requirements that came out around land under contract is the phase that we're in is looking at trusts looking at partnerships looking at a group of what we would call regenerative wealth so these are not really investors. These are generational wealth um, families that are really looking to support regeneration throughout different aspects of society from housing to indigenous revitalization of land and water usage, uh, knowing that there are community and cooperative models that support uh, large influxes of capital and that there are trust networks built in and there's transparency. And our little group is, is right now in my my seat feeling so blessed to be in this group um, and to have this this awareness and this insight and to see all the work that you guys are doing and uh, yeah just love you guys so look forward to to seeing more of you in person sometime and that's it thank you and maybe joel sent it to brandon all right that's right, uh, I just want to give so much gratitude to this RCA family that I get to see and check in with every week. Uh, you guys are wonderful. It's a, this amazing group of doers. I think we're in an amazing time right now with allowing technology to be able to, to come together, to have these different types of tools, to bring this type of movement together. So um, this has been quite a, a mission of mine for the last, you know, 10, 12 years. And and uh, really kind of seeing all these different organizations coming together, seeing these projects come together. I think this is just something beautiful that we could, you know, raise our families in, in the future. Uh, these just fun best practices. And, and I think we're definitely this collective right here 
is is definitely driving some stuff forward. Uh, I'm really excited to releasing the investment club with Haifa and their DHO. Uh, we're also really excited about helping out with the evaluation processes and uh, kind of ready to walk this through the walk all these projects through the whole process. So excited to be here and excited to meet all you guys. I'll pass it on whoever has not gone. I'll go briefly. Um, yeah, thanks uh, for having me again. It's really inspiring to be here. Um, I appreciate the, you putting this together, Ricky, and, and keeping these collectives moving forward. It's, uh, it's powerful stuff. Um, yeah, uh, I put some of my links in the, in the chat uh, for the upcoming Hemp Dome event and um, and uh, regenerative gaming. Uh, you can get a hold of me in my calendar. And um, yeah, I'll be here every week. Um, just excited to get to learn more and, and participate and show up. So thank you guys. And I'll pass it on to uh, uh, try Sydney. Sydney. And then if you haven't gone, just put your hand up. And I think we might be done. Yes, I checked out. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Um, Kelly, hands up. Yeah, I know. I just went. I just got inspired to offer if, if the group of us that are focused on investment and fundraising and NFT launches and all that stuff, maybe we just meet in the NFT fundraising crowd pooling section of the Discord and arrange a time for all of us to talk because we're all into really amazing things that can push us forward. So. Yeah. Add a new channel for finance or something for fundraising. Yeah, I noticed there's not a channel for fundraising and finance, so maybe we add it, but we'll talk there. Epic. Well, then we can keep the conversation going in Discord. And again, these calls are really just about checking in and reorienting. All the real work needs to happen, you know, outside these calls, of course. So see you all in Discord and have a lovely week. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye.